Hey fellow scopers, how are you today? How are you doing? Mitch Jackson, Jackson and Wilson. Love Periscope, love live streaming, love sharing tips, advice, and any help. Thank you for the uh, hearts. That's awesome. I hope everyone's looking forward to Friday. I am a lawyer. I'm a man of many hats. One happens to be an attorney. And today, what we're going to be doing is sharing part five of five good ways of finding and hiring a lawyer. And that's what today's show is all about. I, my name is Mitch Jackson. My firm is Jackson & Wilson. You can follow me, Ray Live Streaming, at streaminglawyer.com. My firm website is mylawyerrocks.com. Hi, Hugo. Thanks for joining us. And uh, today is part five, nine questions that you need to ask every lawyer you're thinking about hiring before, hello, hi, bonjour, how's it going, before hiring that attorney. Uh, let's go over the first four steps that we shared Monday through Thursday. Before I do that, and while we're waiting for people to join us, check this out. I didn't post this yesterday. It was in my paperwork. Here's a picture of my daughter on my Honda CRF 450, number 28. Been riding and racing motocross for about 38 years. This was when I was racing the 40 and over vet series. And uh, I just love this picture, so I thought I'd share it. But uh, listen, share today's scope. Yes, I am a lawyer. And I appreciate you stopping by. And that's why I'm doing these periscopes. I want to share five ways you can find a good lawyer. On Monday, the first approach I shared, and all of these are shared at, okay, thanks. For all of these I shared uh, at streaminglawyer.com. Number one, use martindale.com. It's a website you can go to 24-7, you can type in your city, your state, what type of legal help you need, and then you can find a, uh, and Shars, Shars, Sharsleen ask what kind of lawyer am I? I'm an honest lawyer, I'm an ethical lawyer, I'm an experienced lawyer, three decades. Now we help, we help people who have been harmed in, <laughs> we help people who have been harmed in catastrophic injury and wrongful death cases. Uh, by the wrongdoing of others, by companies that put profits over people, put out unsafe products, things like that. Uh, and uh, just retained earlier this week on a tragic wrongful death jet ski case. A young lady was out of Lake Havasu, was hit from behind uh, while a, a passenger on a watercraft and killed. And so we're helping her family uh, seek justice against the gentleman that was negligent, reckless, irresponsible, and caused the accident. Let's go back to how you find a good lawyer. Number one, it's tragic, it's tragic, but I really enjoy what I'm doing and I love helping people. Number one, use martindale.com. On Tuesday, we talked about avo.com. This is another online uh, database website type of scenario where you can find a lawyer using avo and then you can drill down to the type of lawyer you want. You can get your legal questions answered on the web avo website. Uh, Wednesday, we talked about Option number three, <laughs> you know what, that's pretty good, I like that one. Option number three is to ask a family or friend or someone at work who you trust for the name of a referral of an attorney that you can go to. Uh, then put that person into the AVO and Martindale databases and do your due diligence. Number four, on Thursday we talked about and shared a really good way to find a lawyer who is outside of your state, outside of your town, your city, what have you. And that is to contact the local bar association of that city or state and ask them for the name of a referral. Who would they uh, trust to handle that particular type of case? Ask for the names of the past two or three bar association presidents. Call their office, talk to them or their assistants, and uh, we handle catastrophic injury. What kind of lawyer am I? We handle catastrophic injury and wrongful death cases, some business litigation cases. We try to help people. That's the type of lawyers that we are. Uh, and ask for the name of the president of the Bar Association. Call his or her office. Find out if they handle the type of legal matter that you need help in. If so, that might be a good firm to go to. If not, ask them for a referral of who would they trust in town with their family law, with their divorce, with their criminal defense type of case. So those are four good ways to find a lawyer and all of those are shared via Periscope videos at streaminglawyer.com. Today, number five, I'm going to share with you nine questions I want you to ask 
every single lawyer that you meet with, who you found using these four questions uh, before signing a retainer agreement. And the nine questions that I'd like you to ask is the first question is, how long have you been a licensed attorney? How long have you been practicing law? Question, before I answer that, question, what do you have to say to young people who are thinking about becoming lawyers? I think it's the best profession in the world. I think it's the type of profession where if you want to make a difference, if you want to help people, then this is the profession for you. I absolutely enjoy doing what I'm doing. I've been doing it for 30 years. I wrote a blog post at jacksonandwilson.com about being a trial lawyer, and uh, it's fascinating. I just love it. You can do anything in the world with a law degree. You can practice law. You can start a business. You can be an entrepreneur. You can, you can do whatever you want, and that's why I like it so much. You can make a difference. Uh, let's talk about those nine questions. Number one, ask the attorney how long have they been practicing law. This is the type of profession, it's somewhat like medicine, where the longer you do it, the more you see, the more experiences you encounter. Generally speaking, the better you are, and especially if you're with someone that they're, that they're passionate about, uh, a lawyer who's passionate about what he or she is doing, and um, there are very good lawyers out there that haven't been practicing that long. You kind of have to make a gut call on that. Do you want to roll the dice? Uh, have, are you sitting in front of one of those lawyers? Or do you want somebody that's been around the block a few times, tried a few cases, uh, understand the dynamics of the area of law that they're practicing? So just keep that in mind. The first question is, how long have you been practicing law? Uh, number two, and I love these questions that I'm getting, and I'm going to go ahead and answer these questions. That's what I like about live scoping. That's what it's all about. What courses should you take? Uh, I'm going to ignore the uh, the jokes. I pretty much heard them all. Um, and uh, but you know what? Uh, take courses that you enjoy doing. That's my recommendation in college. If you enjoy politics, take political science. If you enjoy communication, be a communications major. Um, and. Uh, you know, just do what you enjoy doing, and that's, I think, the best way to, to roll into law school. Uh, answer to question number one, how long have you been practicing law? I think a good answer is 10, 15 years. Uh, you get somebody that's been around the block, that has the experience, that's probably someone that can do a good job for you. Number two, ask the question, what percentage of your practice is devoted to, and then that area of law? So if it's family law, what percentage of your practice is devoted to family law cases? The answer you want to hear is something around 80 or 90 percent. You want that attorney to specialize or to emphasize his or her practice in that area of law. The reason I'm not telling you 100 percent is that oftentimes lawyers that do do 5 or 10 percent of their practice in other areas of the law, they can bring in their experiences, uh, how they've handled those cases, how they've litigated or tried those cases into the arena or area of law that you need help with, and it, it may give that attorney a fresh perspective or a different way of dealing with a particular issue. So it's okay if that lawyer doesn't specialize in 100% in that area of law, but I think you probably want to look at someone that's got about 90% of their effort in the area of law that you need help with. And one of the problems with lawyer jokes is that you get blocked as a user. So we'll see you later. Um, Question number three, you want to ask every lawyer thinking about hiring. How many court and jury trials have you had and what were your results? It's really important to hire an attorney that has experience in the courtroom. That was easy. And uh, there's something about trying cases. Once you've tried cases, once you've tried many cases, it really does bring everything full circle from start to finish. You know that when you take a case, you understand where you may need to go with that and, and how to prepare a case so that you can properly try it in front of a judge or a jury. There's some really good lawyers out there that have never tried a case, and that's fine. I don't know if that's who you'll be sitting across from. My recommendation is find a lawyer that's tried 10 or 20 cases or more you know what, reach out to me with questions. If you're thinking about becoming a lawyer, thinking about going to law school, reach out to me on Twitter, at Mitch Jackson. I'd love to, you know, just give me a call. Let's talk about it. It'd be my pleasure. But uh, I've had about 65, 66 trials, a lot of trials, a lot of experience in the courtroom. It has helped me settle cases, 
mediate cases. Another thing about trying a lot of cases is that you develop a reputation. The insurance companies know, and the opposing counsel know, and defense attorneys know, judges know. They know which lawyers in the community try their cases. So if I have a situation that needs to be settled or mediated or resolved, they know that the other side knows that if, if they don't work with me to get it done, I would just as soon try the case. That's great leverage to have. So when you're sitting across from an attorney who, who you found using one of the first four steps, you know, find out if that attorney has spent time in court trying cases. And if he or she has, then I think you're probably uh, heading in the right direction. Question number five, will I be interacting directly with you or with someone else at your office? I get the need to have administrative and support staff handle some of the routine matters in a law firm, but it's really important that the, hire, the lawyer you hire is the lawyer who's representing you, and you need to make clear that that's what you're expecting from the relationship. Oftentimes with big firms, uh, you'll be meeting with a, a young associate, you'll be under the impression a senior partner will be handling your file, and that's not always the case. So you want to make sure that the attorney that you're meeting with is also the attorney that will be handling your file, that will be appearing in court for you, that will be taking depositions, working on your pleadings, and trying your case. Be crystal clear about that. That's a very important question that you need answered, and that's the answer you need. Number five, ask the attorney you're meeting with are you AV rated by Martin Del Hubble? What is your AVO rating? The highest rating on AVO is a 10.0 out of a 10.0. An AV rating with Martin Del Hubble is the highest rating possible, thanks for the hearts, with respect to ability and ethics. And once again, on AVO, I think it's a 10.0. Here's the deal. There are a lot of great lawyers out there that haven't been practicing enough to get their AV rating, and I get that. An AV rating is a rating that's extended to a lawyer in a confidential fashion through surveys of local judges and lawyers. They then rate that attorney in ability and ethics and then once that process is done, the attorney is notified of what their rating is. And both Lisa and I are AV rated. We're very proud to have been AV rated for some time now. We've worked our butts off to achieve these ratings and it means the world to us that the community feels that way about us. Now having said that, when you're meeting a lawyer and you're thinking about hiring that lawyer, ask them if they're AV rated, ask them if uh, what their ratings are in AVO, and then independently check out the answers. Once again, I know some outstanding lawyers that haven't been practicing long enough to get that AV rating. And so because of that, they're not going to have their AV ratings. That doesn't mean they're not going to do a fantastic job for you. That doesn't mean they're not going to kick ass in court when you go to court with your attorney. You have to make that independent uh, assessment yourself, but it is something that I would like you to ask any lawyer that you're, that you're meeting with. Number six, question number six I want you to ask every lawyer that you're meeting with is, are you an active member of the local, state, and national trial lawyer organizations or lawyer organizations? You want an attorney that is plugged into the local and national organizations. The latest trial techniques, the latest cases that come down the line that are decided by state and federal and the Supreme Court. By being part of these organizations, it allows lawyers to really absorb a lot of information that an attorney may not otherwise uh, be privy to by not being connected with these groups. So ask the attorney, what groups are you part of? What are you actively engaged in? And then you know use that information during your decision-making process as to whether or not you should hire an attorney. Number seven, question number seven, can you provide me with the names of five to ten past clients who are willing to share their experiences with you about your representation. Okay, ask, a, ask an attorney for the names of uh, five to ten past clients so that that client can go out and talk to these other past clients to get feedback about what their experience really was. This is really important. If an attorney can't give you this information or refuses to, that should be a red flag. It's either a red flag that the attorney you know, doesn't have five to ten clients who will say nice things about him, and her, him or her or it may just be an attorney that hasn't taken the time to set up that avenue for you. And, and I get that. But, you know, ask the question, listen to the answer, and if you're able to follow up with uh, five to ten clients or just a couple of clients, that should give you good feedback on what that attorney, what his firm, 
does he walk his talk? Does she tell you what she, uh, does she does what she tells you she's going to do? Uh, number eight, do you have testimonials from past clients and other attorneys in the community that you can take with you and read before making a decision? Once again, I think this is a really good question to ask so that you can find out what other past clients have to say or have said in writing about this attorney. What have other lawyers in the communities, what have they had to say about this particular attorney? The earlier question had to do with someone who you could pick up the phone and call. Uh, this question has to do with, do you have any written testimonials? We just got a really nice testimonial that came in uh, today's mail uh, from a client I'll be posting on our website later today. It means the world to me. It's a gentleman who was on his bike uh, and hit by a uh, a, uh, a driver of a motor vehicle, broken shoulder, two surgeries, titanium plate in his shoulder, and we were able to get the case done. And he just wrote a, a gem of a testimonial. It means the world to me. So I'll be posting that on the website later today. Uh, but that would be question number eight. Question number nine, this is an important question. Look your attorney in the eye and ask him or her, as my case progresses, as the facts material, materialize, as you gain more information, will you always look me in the eye and will you always tell me what you honestly think I should do next? Not what I may necessarily want to hear, but in your opinion, what you honestly think we should do next. This is huge. You want an attorney that's going to tell you exactly what you need to hear. If you're having chest pains and you go to see a heart specialist and you require a triple bypass to save your life, you don't want that heart specialist to tell you you're going to be fine, it's just indigestion, go home and drink some Alka-Seltzer. Okay, you want that doctor to tell you this is what we need to do to fix the problem. The same concept applies in the practice of law. You want an attorney who has your best interests of mind, who's going to tell you exactly what you need to hear, and who's not going to roll the dice on your behalf. So that's question number nine of our nine questions. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, a comment from, uh, I'm not even going to pronounce, try to pronounce it, but I appreciate it, and I'm trying to give great advice. So this week we've sh shared four specific ways for you to find a good lawyer. We've shared uh, today a fifth approach to the whole concept of retaining an attorney, and that is nine questions to ask every lawyer who you're meeting with. All of these questions can be found at our website. Just use the search box and type in nine questions, but go to jacksonandwilson.com or mylawyerrocks.com. Use that search box and type in and you'll see all the questions. We have a couple of blog posts on this topic. And to watch this particular live stream, if you go to streaminglawyer.com, I'll post this Periscope for you. You'll also be able to see the last four days of Periscopes on this topic so that by when it's all said and done, if you ever need a lawyer, you, you know, hopefully I've taken you by the hand and walked you through the process. And that's it about, that's about it today. It's Friday. I'm going to head out for lunch. It's about 11.48 here in Southern California. And I wish each and every one of you a great weekend. I encourage you to connect with me this weekend. I'll be periscoping and meerkatting, meerkatting this weekend from uh, Strands Beach on Saturday and Sunday morning during my morning run. And we can chat about anything you want to chat about. Morning news. Question. Since law is mainly a grad course do the, you know what I, I missed that so reach out to me with any questions about being a lawyer it'd be my pleasure to always answer your questions okay it's no big deal and uh, once again all my contact information's at Mitch Jackson on Twitter you guys this was a great great periscope I'm glad you stopped by uh, Steve how you doing and uh, that's it for today guys TGIF have a great Friday and make the rest of today your masterpiece. Bye-bye, everybody. You're welcome, guys.